concede that. Okay, now it's fix fixed. Punt is off. It looks like it's going to be a short one. A bounce back. That's a oh, that bounced off a Round Valley player, but Walker being aware of that jumped on the ball. Elks will have a first down and ten, right about the 43. Looking out of sight. It's kind of a different feeling tonight. We're in the dome on a Thursday evening for varsity. Uh, the dome is not as full as it normally is, but there's still a good turn. Student sections lit up with the lights on their hats. Cheerleaders down in the end zone. Proctor's pulled up, got the outs and first and down. I'm gonna take a snap. It looks like they're gonna go for one down to Trace and Merrill right down the side. And he holds on. I'm going to pick it up right down to the 13. Right about the 13 yard line for a nice pickup. There's definitely an opportunity for Round Valley there. Tracing's got some size and he's going to be able to stand over some of those defending backs that Ganado has put out there. No, she doesn't. Elks back up to the line. Riker's going to fake it, pull the ball. He's going to run out, and it's a race to the end zone. Riker's going to scoot across the line. Fourteen to zero. Six forty-one left in the first quarter. We'll have the extra point coming up here in just a moment. Man, that was a nice run. It was a nice run. He made the defender commit to the running back, pulled the ball, and was able to scoot to the outside. See if they can handle the snap on this one. Ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. Kevin Flores, the senior for Round Valley, kicking his third gear, puts the ball through, gives the Round Valley Elks 15 to nothing in the lead here in the first quarter. Oh, we got the band back. That's exciting. That is exciting. I think this is the first game this year we've had the band. So good to see them making their return. 6.41 left in this Treadmasters first quarter. Your score currently 15-0 in favor of the home team, the Round Valley Elks. Oh, well, that was stressful. I'm sorry. I bailed on you. <laughs> You're good. I know you got stuff to get set up, and there's a game going on, so everything is good. We got Kevin Flores set to kick off again here. See if he takes a deep, just like the last two kicks. It looks like he will. They're going to grab it right on the two-yard line and run that out. Met by a wall of Elks right about the 15 out to the 16. Keyshawn Brown, number 18 for Ganado. As we get set here. I'm anticipating tonight to be able to see some of the sophomores and especially some of the freshmen be able to get some playing time where they we really really haven't had that opportunity on a varsity level this year based on how things have worked out, but I think that's what's coming. So far, it's, uh, it's not looking good for the Ganado Hornets, but they're getting ready to try and put together a drive here. They're going to fakes the run. Oh, back to pass hit as he throws. Who is that? Is that Trayson? I believe so. Get an arm nope, across. That was, that was Ziggler. I uh, no, I think that's a 10, not a 12. Yeah, I think that's Trayson. First 12. He's on this closest side to the 20. He just turned his back to you. Oh, yep, there he is. Nope, that was Trayson. My Tr apologies. Trayson got in there right as he tried to release the ball and put the hit on him and... Made a good play. Timeout, White. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of these jerseys from the from the Elks because 
I just think it makes it hard to see the numbers. It was worse last year with the with the lighting. It's a lot easier this year. I mean, I have to admit, but I still struggle with them for whatever reason. It's fun to see some of the different colors they're able to come out with each year. I know they add to the collection, and they kind of rotate through that selection each year. They have the, the really bright white yellow bumblebees that I refer to them. Oh, it's yeah. not necessarily my favorite, but it's fun that they have some variation out there. I know the kids like that. Oh, that is fun. The coaching staff, I want to say, they take care of the, the kids, keep them engaged. You know, football's a rough sport, practice is rough, but they give them some things that the kids take pride in and look forward to. Indeed. So Ganado took a time out there. We're back on the field. We're going to have second down and 10 for Ganado. They come out in a split formation. They got three wide to the top of the field. One back with the quarterback. He's going to fake the run. He's going to throw. And he's got pressure coming oh. in. Is that Pablo? That is not Pablo. That is Kenley Caldwell. Yeah, we had that outside linebacker stunt and just overwhelmed that right hand side of the offensive line of Ganado. And right now, they're just getting a little overwhelmed by the pass rush. That's good to see from Kinley. He's an outstanding wrestler. Had a chance to watch him a couple times last year. And he came out for football this year. It's good to see him getting in there and mixing it up a little bit. Ganado breaks the huddle, brings the team back up on a third down and about 14. Going to throw the ball out here to the flat. Overthrow is number 18. Yeah, rushing the throws. That's what happens when you get hit the first two times you try it. It doesn't take many times to figure that out. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Ganado's next possession try to establish a little bit of a run game because that will help a lot with that pass rush if you can start getting there underneath them. Making the defensive line respect the run first instead of teeing off on you. Indeed, because right now they're just pinning their ears back and going. Brett Jordan, Dallin Walker back to receive the punts again. It's going to be a short one again. Brett's going to take this one. Pushed it out down here to the sideline. He looks like he's going to. Right down to the one yard on the line. one yard line, nice almost. Run. Nice run for Brett Jordan. I don't know that I picked up on the fact that he's been returning punts this year, or if this is the first game. Yeah, unfortunately, two players there that could have made the block, but the way the quarterback was turned, they were behind him. And hey, kudos to them for not just hitting him in the back. <laughs> Uh, that's been attempting. Marble brings the Elks up to the line on split formation, one back. He's going to hand the ball. Harlan's going to get into the end zone. That's a touchdown. Oh, West playing with his lights again. You know, I have to admit, I it's a pretty cool upgrade, I think. And we will watch the instant replay. Here he comes, oh, right through the line, blocking. right on through. Kevin back out to attempt the extra point for Round Valley. Kevin Flores with the kick. Good hold. Good. And through. Well, with 5-18 left, we're already to 22 nothing Here in this Treadmasters first quarter. Not it's an interesting thing, challenge that the AIA kind of puts upon schools, and Round Valley is one of those schools where they've been moved up for competition reasons. And then, you know, one week you're playing Thatcher, one week you may not be playing a team quite up to that caliber, and then you'll face a team like Sholo coming up here next week. It's just quite the yo-yo that the Elks have to face as they uh, go through this season. Yep, and you know, in years past, these teams, uh, Ganado, Monument Valley, teams that we typically play, I've noticed that momentum seems to be a huge factor in how they play. If they don't come out early and get going, they, they seem to struggle. 
I'm seeing a couple other freshmen out there on the kickoff. I'm seeing number 15, that looks like Lane Hill to me. I also saw number 42, Jeffrey Cochran. Uh, Jose Leon, or Leon, down there as well, number 19. He might actually be wearing a different number. It's good to see some of those freshmen getting in there. I know that they really enjoy that. After getting pounded on during the week in uh, practice, get the opportunity to come out and play on the varsity level. It's a good opportunity for them. Looks like the Elks are gonna stay in their four-man defensive front. They're gonna bring those linebackers wide. Kenley Caldwell is out here really wide. Drop back to pass. And oh my goodness, open. there we go. That's it's momentum they needed. The sideline and Elmer. You're gonna right mark him. One inch line. Oh my nice. goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, hold on, folks. These Hornets aren't done yet. Was that number 18, Keyshawn Brown? Yeah. Reception or was that 88? Uh, well, Might have been 88. Wyatt at. James right there uh, on the reception. Looking for his number. I don't know. If 88. The, I don't know if the cornerback bit on that route, letting the receiver get by him, or he was running with him, and then as soon as the ball was thrown, he oh, just separation. Right up the middle, and he is met by Keanu Clark, who says, "Not on this down. Are you getting in the end zone?" Nice hit coming up from a linebacker position. It's interesting to watch. Keanu has played three years on the defensive line for Round Valley, and they have moved him back to a linebacker position. He's a big kid, strong kid, and as he showed right there, he'll come up and put the hit. Oh, second and goal from the six-inch line. Right down there on, the, yes, that's a great view that Sherrod has for us. They're going to hand it again, and on that one, I think they... Oh, he's close. real close. He's real close. Hasn't they're, signaled yet. They're not going to give it to him. Oh, I mean, now we're... Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It doesn't get much closer than that. Oh, Sherrod. That was a nice what shot. What are you doing? Right there. There we that go. That was a nice shot. That's the shot we were looking for. Good job, Sherrod. Well, two more tries to punch it in from there. Jaden Brown, under quarterback, he's going to try to push it in. I think he might have made it. Yep, and we got the official signal. That's touchdown, Ganado. Well done from the Hornets on the board with six points. Three minutes, 43 seconds left in this Treadmaster first quarter. So are we going to go for two? Do we have a place kicker? Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for two. Yeah, this is a huddle, not a, a place kicker setup. So let's see what uh, they've got on their mind here. Looks like number 15 for the center. Two points. Oh, Can and the quarterback tried it? taking it around oh, the outside. Oh, Trace and Merrill. Trace and Merrill. Yeah, he gets a hold of him, throws him down. There we go. Just under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Round Valley 22, Donato 6. Donato will kick off to the Elks. The Elks will receive on the kickoff for the first time this evening. Well, I'll take this opportunity. White Mountain Off-Road, LLC. Hey, if you guys are looking for some adventure and some good times up in the uh, White Mountains, Book your ATV, UTV rentals there. They got the trailers to haul them back and forth. They got the goodies. Get a hold of them and uh, get those reservations now. It's a good time. They do a lot of cool stuff. They're always adding new stuff, new rentals. So White Mountain Off-Road, LLC. Give them a shout out. Looks like we've got Walker and Elmer back deep. Trace and Merrill, Brett Jordan on the next line up. Number three, Tristan Sosi kicking off. And that ball's going to get down. Let's see if Dallin will pick that up, which he does. And he crosses the 25 to the 30. Tripped up by number 83. Looks like Tanner Guy getting the arm tackle out there, bringing down Dallin Walker. Hey, if it works, it works.
If he if he got by that defender, he had a lot of daylight in front of him and blockers. So. He had a lot of room. Looks Kudos like number 83 for saving that one. <laughs> Looks like the Elks are staying with the starting formation. Marbles back out there under center, split formation. Ziegler off to the side. Ziegler off to the right, and he was caught. Trying to loop around that end, and I'm not picking up on that number yet. Number three, Tristan Sosi putting the stop on him. It's a loss of about four. Or three, I don't know how to count. Don't trust me. I understand, we went to Round Valley, so <laughs> count similar. Yeah. I forgot to wear my flip-flops tonight, so I, get, I don't have the, the courtesy of my toes. Riker back to receive the snap. He's gonna pull it down, look for a pass, and he's gonna go down the middle of the field. Brett Jordan is open. Number eight, Jackson Thomas, forces him out of bounds within the 20. First out of bounds line, number eight. That's Jackson Thomas. Oh, beautiful. Throw and catch. Nice little chunky yardage there. I did not have the opportunity to watch Round Valley last weekend, um, but it looks like Round Valley has a definite, some things that they're focused on, some things that they're trying to work on um, as far as plays and players and locations and trying to get settled back in. Riker back to take the snap. He's going to hand that off to Ziegler. And he's going to come out here to the, he's going to skip on into the end zone. It's a nice block out here. Who is that, Brett? Jordan out here the block. Indeed. That's good for another Trail Riders touchdown. Let's watch the replay on that. Oh, big hole lead blocker right behind Merrill. Great blocking from his uh, wide receiver out there as well. Didn't catch the number, but. Kevin Floor is back in to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. Oh, it was a little rough on the uh, hold, but he got it down the last second and threw the uprights. 225 left. Round Valley ends up after the 18. Round Valley 28. Ganado sits. Just under two and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Well, so Ganado picking up a little momentum offensively, but still struggling defensively so far. It was nice to see them come out and be uh, pretty aggressive on that last one, and not letting uh, their unsuccessful previous attempt stop them going on that pass, picking up that long touchdown or that long run, then punching it in for a touchdown shortly thereafter. Indeed, I mean, their uh, receivers are tall. They really do have quite an advantage. Fifteen, Lane Hill coming in, grabbing him, throwing him down. Three freshmen were lined up there: Jeffrey Crock and Cochran, Lane Hill. Cody Finch were lined up together there on the kickoff. Freshman team is an impressive group as they're coming up, getting some varsity experience. They're fun to watch. Yeah, how are they doing this year so far? I haven't kept track of them. Well, the struggle that we face is we don't really have a true freshman and JV team to kind of mix them, and so you play. So you're the playing opposite. their JV teams. Yeah. It's yep. They've had some success, and, but they're learning and growing, and as long as those kids are getting better, I think that's what the coaches are really looking for. Uh, timeout, Ganado. That'll be their second one of the half. So, in that case, we'll give you more ads. Why not? Altitude 02, hyperbolic oxygen therapy. You know, it's good for recovery. It's good for uh, post-surgery, things of that nature. White has one left. Oh, that was the ref chiming in. Not about uh, the hyperbaric chamber, but uh, about the game. So uh, give them a shout out. Go see them. And I'm 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Also good for the immune system. That uh, low altitude situation helps give you a little boost if you're feeling a little down. Schedule yourself an hour session. Get back on top. Donato takes a So snap. much pressure coming up the middle. And who's there first? That's number seven. Is that Oscar? Oscar? Uh, Oscar is our foreign exchange student. I think he is from Sweden. Now that I said that, I may be wrong, and it may be Switzerland. I, I don't know. Either way, Oscar, I apologize if I got that wrong. We got an official timeout for something? Or is this charged to a team? Like we got oh, we got an injured down. player on the field. There we go. That'll do it. So it was kind of interesting. Oscar comes over as a, tra a foreign exchange student, and he's a soccer player. That's what he has done in this life, and uh, he got talked into, or maybe he just wanted to play football. So he came out to play football and did not join the soccer club, and we've gone through, what are we, in our fourth game of the season? They came down the other night to take pictures. We were playing Paige. And Oscar's out on the soccer field, so he's oh, doing he's both. Iron Man in it. He is. That's awesome. Decided, hey, win in Rome, might as well do what the Romans do. And Went out for the football Jackie team. Solis's That's fun. That is fun. It's good to see him out there. So who, I guess that was a official timeout. I remember. Already forgot, it just that quickly. Two minutes left in the first year, that was up by 23. Second long. Four man front, Kenley still hugging this side. Ooh, got the Elks to jump. Both of them. And hey, hard, hard count, count will help. Encroachment defense, five yards previous spot, first down. Well, second down, but close. That is good sound. Nice to get that tight in there right up the middle and i think pablo is going to be the one who grabbed him to tackle him number 50 for round valley maybe a yard on that play jackson thomas i believe on the run indeed well let's see what else uh Ganado comes up in a spread formation, one back. Fake the handoff, they're gonna throw again, right down the side. Oh, oh. oh did he get, oh. <laughs> I think they knocked it out of each other's hands. Do you have a replay on that? I couldn't tell, was that Pablo that got in there, or Ziegler? Uh, Batted was, that down. It was Ziegler and, let's watch the replay here. Oh, 77 and, Number eight. So Keanu almost coming up with the interception. And Kenley diving for the ball at the same time. Brings up a fourth down and ten. Ganado's back to punt. We have just over a minute left to go here in the first quarter. Fred Jordan's going to get the ball again. And it looks like he's going to just, oh, he's going to go out to the sideline. Oh, trip down. I think he actually might have lost a couple of yards. Cimarron Curley, number two for Ganado, coming up, and tripping up Jordan as he heads to the outside. Good containment there for the Hornets. Some of you might be wondering, where's Dan Muth tonight? He's off being a referee. It's a Thursday. It's a demanding job this year. I think they're short on refs, and uh, they're calling him to do all sorts of different schedules. We appreciate Dan when he's here and also helping the kids when he's out refing. Indeed. Walker's coming across motion. They're going to fake the hot hand off to him. Riker's going to run it right up the middle, lower the shoulder, get over the first down mark, going to take it down to about the 37 yard line. Good for about 12. Elks break the formation. Clock is running. 
35 seconds left in the quarter. First and 10 for the Hills. Harlan's going to take the snap, hand it off to Harlan. Harlan's going to be off to the right side. He's going to put it back in the middle. Back out to the outside. Oh, broken two tackles. Oh, and pushed out of bound right about the three yard line. Who's that? Number 88, Wyatt James coming over. And Indeed. Ending that touchdown run opportunity for Riley. Breaking two tackles, getting up the field, and 88 finds him. Knocks him out there at the four yard line. Three yard line. I know how to count, I promise. Number 18 in for Round Valley. Number 18, I've seen a few times this evening. Trace Whiting. Well, he's on the far side. Riker's going to hand the ball to Riley. Riley's going to follow the blocker. As the clock winds off. So we're going to attempt this extra point, and then I think we're going to go into the quarter break. Snap is up, ball is down, the kick is good, holds, and it is through. On your feet, Elks fans, for the fight song. Okay, I'm looking at the kickoff crew, and it looks like I'm seeing some more new numbers. See number 22, Brenton Walker. Looks like he may be part of this crew on this kickoff. He's a freshman. Actually been running the quarterback position for that freshman JV team. Ladies and gentlemen, if you brought your little one with you and you want to show them off. After Connor Luker had an injury that took him out. Lion King, your little child. Oh, you're here, you can pick him up. Who out the crowd? Got 22 on this side. Yes. Yes. Eight, Keep Tim Callaway, 88. We got there Cole we go. Tom, <laughs> 80. Brian Acosta, 19. Jose Leon, Justin. 7. Show Oscar Seth. Kevin Flores is set to kick off again. Kevin Flores, it's like Lane quarter. Hill. Jeffrey Cochran, that ball is well into the end zone. Right to the touchback. All righty. I think that's Trace Whiting again, and then it looks like Jonathan Madrid on the far outside. Getting a chance on the kickoff team for Round Valley. Indeed. Are we going to keep our starters in for the second quarter? It looks like we will. At least some of them. Get a good workout in. Trace Whiting looks like he's going to come in as a far corner. He had an opportunity to play over there. Lord is under center. Number 10 back in the ball game. Hands off to 20. Nice eight. pickup of about six yards. Eight on six on 28, the eight. Christopher Sosi for Ganado. Hey, that's what they've been needing. Establish the run. You said that early. And that passing opportunities will open up for him. Indeed, although still a lot of football game left. You never know. But that first play will uh, open up the Arizona Choice Insurance second quarter. Quarterback's going to go up under center on this play. Going to keep the ball. Quarterback still with it. Oh. That looked like Keanu busting through there, and it is. Keanu Clark. Keanu Clark. Yeah, he's just not getting, not getting enough time to make any reads and get that ball downfield. That loss is going to take him back, and it's going to be about a third down of 10 coming up. Two split to each side, one back in the backfield. Quarterback takes a snap. He's going to fake the handoff. 
And he's going to throw it. Ooh, good for the first down and more. He's going to pick that up. Looked like he oh. stepped out right about the 35. On the 35-yard line. I'm not sure if the defender got turned around, was watching the ball or watching the player. He he overran him. Unfortunately, just missed the replay, but he uh, he overran the coverage, and then the other defender coming over to help actually tripped him up on the quick tackle, and then they were off to chasing him after that. Was that number 83 tenor guy? Looks like they're going to hand it straight off. Jackson Thomas breaking it out to about the five yard line. These Ganado Hornets not done yet, Scott. Not giving up. That's a good sign. All right, Oaks fans and Hornets fans, I want to give away another candy bar. From Ganado's perspective, that's a good sign that the kids hang in there. All right, it looks like that's going to be a timeout round valley. Coaches have seen enough on the last two plays. They want to kind of right, settle the kids right. down. Here's your question. Regroup. If two times four is half 16, what's the rest? 928-251-0005. Wes testing the audience's knowledge <laughs> of the cheers. Yes. Indeed. Louder. Molly Butler Lodge, rooms, dining, and bar. Indeed. Now, this week I had the opportunity to go down and uh, sit down with Team Beard at Pioneer Title Agency, sign some paperwork. So I got the personal experience and the professionalism down there. Always a, a great experience. And so I uh, always appreciate them and appreciate their sponsorship. And always pleasant down there. And they make it so so easy, they First take care of everything. Ganado had a little pep in their step, breaking the huddle, coming out. Number gonna hand it off to 28. He's gonna go over the far side. Ooh, stretching and, and lunging for a few yards there at the end, making something out of nothing. Christopher Sosi, looks like he's down to the two yard line. Second down and two for Ganado on the two-yard line. Two yard line, just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Split two to each side, one running back. He's in a fake. Yeah. Got him in the backfield. He's reading something. He's done that twice on that formation. I don't know if he's reading the guard, but he is coming through on a blitz and getting pressure on the quarterback. Ganado is going to take their final time out of the corner, quarter, I believe, to regroup from the six-yard line. They'll have a third time down out, and six. White. That will be their last time out of the half. Round Valley Youth Football for the last 15 years. Been giving kindergarten through sixth grade boys and girls opportunity to learn and play football. They do travel and play at what? St. John's, Sholo, Snowflake. And uh, they just want us to let you know that they appreciate the long-standing support of the school district, and more importantly, this Round Valley community for helping them out, Round Valley Youth Football. There are a lot of parents that put some time into that as coaches, providing support for those kids, hauling those kids around the mountain to give them an opportunity to play. Give a shout out to those coaches and those kids and the opportunity that they have to play, develop a love for the game. It's a fun thing to watch. Donato's going to bring three receivers off to this side, one to the far side, one running back. Oh, Ball snap over the head. head. Yeah, snap. Oh, it's going to get kicked down the field. It's a soccer game. Ball is still loose. And oh, I think Brody into 
ended up with the ball. Well, he got kicked, it got flipped, it got mishandled. And Brody comes up with the... Well, that was something. Oh, so unfortunate to see Ganado in a scoring position and then something like that happening. High snap. Gets you every time. Brown Valley switched up there on a five-man front on that last one, but no matter. Falls over the quarterback's head and cut it short. Marble brings the Elks back up to the line. Caldwell in motion and hand him the ball. All those who come out here. Oh, it makes a nice cut back. Ooh, lots of laundry in the backfield. I think they're going to pick, yeah, pick up a holding right there. I'm not sure who was out here. But it's a long time for this near side receiver to get out there and to start blocking the corner and to hold, not hold them, but block them to give that guy a chance to run out there and get around him. It's, it's, a, it's a big call, and we got flagged for the hold on that one. So that play's only going to be worth holding. about a yard. Offense number 24. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. Um, oh, his, well, right, I don't. Puts his right back. From where he put the flag to where he placed the ball <laughs> is uh, 11 and a half yards, but hey, but we've already decided I'm bad at math, so maybe I shouldn't be the one to criticize. Trace Whiting back out to the top side of the formation. Brett Jordan, and I think Caldwell down here on the bottom side. Riker's going to take the snap. And the ball off. And that's a different runner right there. That is Brian Acosta. That is Brian Acosta Sr. Oh, no, we've got another Hornet down. So we're going to have an official timeout right now. So Brian is listed as a senior. To have him listed on the program as a wide receiver and a running or a linebacker. That time he had an opportunity to be in the backfield and pick up a run. <laughs> Big shout out to Beehive Homes of Eager. Um, you know, awesome. Friendly staff, home-cooked meals for your loved ones. I know uh, they took care of uh, Wes's Aunt Gwen there. Appreciate all that they do for this community. Beehive Homes at Eager. Cowboy Up, they're in Midtown Springerville. You need steel chainsaws? You need parts for said chainsaws? You need animal feed, chicken feed? That's the place to go. Go see Jeff. Give Jeff, him a, Jeff give him a hard time. Jeff and Melissa will take care of you. They Indeed, they will. Back after that injury timeout, now Brett Jordan is in the backfield as the quarterback. He's going to take a shotgun snap. They didn't like something. That's they were calling a false start on Round Valley or motion. Motion. Illegal motion. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. First Let's down. Let's see what it was. I didn't see it, but I'm looking out here on the formation. It may have worked in our favor. Brett kind of bobbled that one. That snap coming back at first. Let's take this one. Hand it off again to Brian Acosta. Off to the left side. He's going to break out to... Oh, break out to the sideline, and I wonder if they got. It looked like a bit of face mask, possibly. You saw that head turn as yeah. it went down. At the rapidness of the flags, that's typically one of those calls. Let's go ahead and take a look at this instant replay brought to you by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. Oh, yep. It appeared to be thus. We'll see what they have to say about it. Oh, I see a block in the back right about the same spot. Uh -oh. It could be offsetting penalties. Well, the Elks are ready to get this next play on, and the refs are still talking about the...
Yep. So a face mask and a block in the back, and they're going to offset. Offense, number 66. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So two blocks in the back, so it's not going to offset. So two Because the one first two one. offset, and then the second one took effect, so we're back. It's going to be first and 15 for the Oaks. Back well, the interesting. Red Jordan back, first and 15 for Round Valley. We got just under eight minutes. Caldwell comes in the ball, motion again. Jordan. They're going to give him the ball once Hands again. Right side. He's got to push their two defenders. Number 24, Sean Moore. Who's that, 26 on the tackle, 24 and 26? I believe so. Dante Laughlin from Ganado. Timing was just off on that a little bit. Caldwell came in motion, had to hold up, and then came on. I have a question for the student section. Is it like me on the jazz night that I miss the middle? I like it. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like it. It's very bright. Something wrong with a little neon every now and then? Second 13 for the no. Jordan, from the Jordan back to receive the shotgun. He's going to roll out. Outside. It looks like he's, he's running all the way. Jordan's going to cut up field. We're on the run Cuts it to the outside. Cuts Bobbin. it back. Beaver. He's got blockers Still out there. Number the 26 and 83. Stand him up and drive short. him back. Tanner Guy, Dante Laughlin. On the tackle for oh, Ocanado. big shout out to Sherrod down there, there on the sideline getting his shots like this. I like it. Coming and right at you. I don't know what Sherrod is doing in town, but I'm glad he's here because it's good to put him to work. <laughs> That's a good guy right there. Third one, Jordan from the shotgun. Red's going to give the ball to Brian and go right off of that left side and go up. Number three catching up with Tristan Sosi. Keep him from uh, rumbling on down into the end zone. Yeah, he looks like a player to watch here in the future, doesn't he? Now, if we're talking about Brian, I think he's a senior. Is he a senior? They have him listed as a senior Jacob on the program. Moore, I got a question for you. Really? Jacob. How Interesting. How was the Diamondbacks game? Yeah. Did you have Elks going to come out two wide to the right, no, one to the left, or one to the top, and one running back. Fred's going to hand the ball off. Goes Brian again. Good for about five yards. Take him out. Pick up of about five yards. A big shout out to Loey Hunt and her mom helping us out on the main camera tonight. Doing a great job over there, Loey. Yeah, she's she makes me laugh that Loey. I appreciate her coming out and sticking with us and bearing with us because sometimes you tease her and you're not quite sure how well it went over. <laughs> but it's all love here. Jordan takes snap. He's going to hand off again. Right Costa driving it down to. It he's still, still driving. He may get down to about the two, two and a half yard line. Jacob makes it the touchdown. He's showing me that it's a touchdown. I don't think it's quite there yet. <laughs> We're going to go for first and goal. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, first and goal is okay. Right Back from the three yard line. Elks will have a first goal opportunity coming up. Look at Keanu, Pablo, number 55 is Derek Gillum as the center. Cody Finch and Noah Dana is our lineman tonight. Oh, he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Number 10 and 26, number 10, Jaden Brown. 26, Dante Laughlin putting the hammer on. Brian coming through that time. Brian may need to come off and adjust some equipment. They're telling him to get back in here. Where you going, bro? Team needs you. I'm not sure that Brian will get too many more opportunities to score a touchdown. So they're trying to encourage him to stay in and run. 
Going back to receive the snap. He's going to hand off again. Cost is going to try, try to bust it to the outside. Number 62, Joshua Woody, knifing through to make a tackle. They're going to loss of about one. Bring up a third down and four opportunity. Third down and goal with the chance from the four. Third and goal from five. Jordan has to drop back to pass and he's going to push Elmer. it to Elmer. Take that touchdown to the Nine Valley. Nice throw. Brett Jordan. I had a feeling we'd be throwing it there. I thought they were gonna live and die with Brian on that one. They gave it to him all the way down the field. No, Jacob, thank you. That's good for a Trail Riders touchdown. Yee-haw. Kevin Flores for the extra point attempt. Riker right gets the ball. ball down, kick his kick up. Is up with 3.15 left in the half. It is good. Three to six. Off your booties, Evan Stans. It's time for the White Sox. Just over three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Round Valley is up 43 to six. Someone is pounding on the rail down there. Right down the table, they're pounding out the fight. That's song. the table. I can hear it. Lining up to kick it back to the Hornets. Number one, Keelan Greer. I see him in there this time. He's another freshman for Round Valley. Kick off. They dive right about the 20 and miss him. They're going to cover about the 20, 21 yard line, 26 yard line. Then looks like we've got Jeff Condon down there. You know, I know this isn't any fun for the Ganado team, but you know, this is a good good deal for Round Valley after three hard games more or less in a row. You know, I'm quite sure uh, getting a little extra rest on some of the starting players is a welcome change of pace. Although I'm quite sure they would rather just be playing the whole game, but you know, got to think of the long term. Yeah, we're early in the season, and it's good to get a little break and opportunity when you can. It does take reps away from them. But it's good to see Ram Valley getting some of these other players in. Looks Ganado's back to pass, number 10. And, and just not again. Just not getting the time to set up and throw. It looked like Brody Ziller coming around on the outside on that sack. He was back there quick. Now we're starting to see a few subs coming in. I see number 69, Nell, coming in for Round Valley on the defensive line. Nell is a junior. Have him listed as a guard and a defensive tackle on the program. Number 69, Nell Ruagaba in. Ganado hands the ball off yeah, straight up the middle. Running playing. back squirts off here to the side and picks up. All over the tackle, third down. Couple, we're gonna have about 36. 35 ish. Yep. Just about two minutes left here in your Arizona Choice Insurance second quarter. We're gonna have a speed contest starting halftime. Get that taller. Ganado with the pitch. Number three with the handoff. He does make it back to the line of scrimmage for a slight gain. It's going to bring them to fourth Mill. down and five. Also, youth football. Youth football, make your way to where you're supposed to be for halftime. Walker and Jordan are going to step back to receive the punt if, in fact, that's what Ganado chooses to do. 
Punt team coming on from Round Valley. All right, that's 11 now. Okay, we got it sorted out. They may be coming after that punt on this side. Punt is up, nice high punt across midfield. He picks it up about the 39 yard line. He's going to run out here to the near sideline. Spins out of that tackle. That's a bad. He's going to get down to about the 26. We got a penalty coming in late over here. I don't know. I didn't see anything. Let's watch the replay. Often you'll get a block in the back, but I was watching the ball and not the referee, so I missed holding. Interesting, yeah. If that's where the infraction occurred, he waited a while to throw that flag. He sure did. Looks like the Elks will have the ball from the 10, the 38 yard line. Receiving team, number 11. Yeah, he had his his hands outstretched and he had a hold of that jersey blocking him. Well, okay. I always tell you if you're going to do that, make sure you're chest to chest when you do it. <laughs> it makes yeah, it harder it, to see. It's interesting to watch because holding's legal on the line if you do it right. And but anywhere well, else, you get the flag. It's encouraged. Right. Round Valley looks like they're coming out with essentially the same kids on offense. Jordan's back at quarterback. We got just we got a minute and one second left here in the second. And we're missing a lineman. Round Valley's gonna burn a timeout on that. Well, there timeout you go. Great. Well, which sponsor should we talk about now? How about Mountain Drip IV Hydration Therapy? Mountaindrip.com. Vitamins and minerals through an IV, quick absorption, better recovery, uh, good for uh, immune system boost, muscle recovery, energy support. You know, it's just a high dose of vitamins for overall health and wellness. Mountain Drip IV Hydration Therapy. Sounds delightful. Except for me, I really don't like needles, so that's like the hang up for me. But I'm okay. sure they do a good job. Ooh. Wes is playing uh, Swamp Thing. He's trying to help this game move along, I think. Round Valley's out of their timeout. They're in formation already. Ganado's coming back on the field. Got a minute, one second left here, right before halftime. We're gonna take a knee or we're gonna go for it? It doesn't look like we're taking a knee. It does not appear to be thus. Get him on the snap. He's Jordan's gonna keep the ball on that fake handoff and roll out. He had a blocker out there that kind of got behind or the Kind of got in that zone where he was waiting and managed to escape the block in the back. Well done. Good yeah. restraint. That quarterback kind of slipped the, the block, and there was a little dance going on, and Brett read it and just took it up and made the gain. Pickup of about 11 yards on the play. First down and 10 from the 49. 35 seconds left to go. Clock is running. Caldwell in motion. They're going to fake the pitch to him. Brett's going to run right up the middle. Oh, 24 stays home. Reads the quarterback, bringing it up the middle. Sean Moore from Ganado. And with that, I think they're going to go ahead and let the clock run out and finish out this second quarter. Well, they're going to run one. They're going to need to hurry. One second on the clock, they tried, and they're gonna whistle it down. Not in time. Half time, Ladies teams are gonna go into the, the tunnel. We've got a half, half time program coming up. Indeed. So what are your thoughts of the first half there, Mr. Holiday? Well, my thoughts of the first half. Ganado getting out to a slow start and struggling, having their moments where they're able to move the ball, but just not being consistent with it. 
Ron Valley's come, come out and, and it's been interesting to watch them. They have some designated plays or it looks like some areas or some players that they're trying to go to. They've been able to execute scoring off passes, scoring off runs, focusing on some different things. Riker's been pulled out of here pretty quick. He played a quarter, quarter and a half a quarterback and Brett Jordan got in there and It'll be interesting to see when we come out the second half what the what adjustments Round Valley makes really. This is an opportunity for some of the younger kids to come out and get some playing time. We don't want to get the younger kids hurt, but we do want to get them on the field. So how the coaches manage that will be fun to watch. Indeed, and during our LeSueur Advanced Automotive Halftime Show, we'll cut over to the Round Valley Cheer Squad. Is it still Erica leading the, the cheer squad? I think it is, right? I believe so. If not, I haven't been told differently. So if that's not true, I apologize. I'm just, you know, ignorant of such things. squad completing that for us. Sometimes there's a few different groups here and I get them mixed up. Yeah, there's the dance team, there's the, the cheer team. squad. And I think Erica did both, at least I last see. year she did both, and yes. she may have them again this year. Indeed, looks like up. we're getting ready for the dance team to get on. And like always, we apologize, but we're probably gonna have to talk over the music just because DMCA is a thing on the interwebs, so. So do we have an outlook as far as what's coming up in the future? I was looking a little bit earlier, trying to figure out what Ganado faces as they leave Round Valley. Coming up next week, it looks like they will travel to Blue Ridge and play the Yellow Jackets on the 23rd of September. They'll follow that up with a trip to Sholo, Cougar Stadium, on the 30th of September. And they have a game up in Monument Valley, Page, followed by Window Rock. And then they'll round out the season facing the Winslow Bulldogs. Indeed. Next week, we will be heading to Chisholm. Three, year, three years in a row. I haven't quite figured that out. I know it has something to do with number of home games, number of away games, but three years in a row, I know that Sholo is excited to play Round Valley back over there. Indeed. That's always a very spirited game, to say the least. Last year was a fantastic game. I don't know, four or five touchdowns there right in the fourth quarter, right down to the very oh, end. Man. Good memories there. It's one of those games that'll make you old. If you're coaching, it makes you old. Oh, if you're yeah. a fan, you just enjoy it. Yeah. Round Valley, as we look ahead, they do play Sholo next week. Then we'll go to Monument Valley. Uh, and then Window Rock will come down and play Round Valley in the Dome. And then we'll travel to Winslow. And Paige, the Sand Devils, will come down and play Round Valley in the Dome. And we will actually finish the season against Blue Ridge here in the Dome. I think last year, the game against Blue Ridge got canceled. Uh, the year before that, we played Blue Ridge over in Blue Ridge, and it was a wet, sloppy, cold mess. And I'm not sure, it's been a few years since we played Blue Ridge because that was our transition back from 2A to 3A. So it'll be nice to get the Yellow Jackets back in the dome coming up. That will round out our season before our tournament play comes in late. Indeed. On the schedule for Round Valley. So some other games going on in the region this week and it looks like Sholo is playing the Winslow Bulldogs tomorrow evening. Over in uh, Snowflake, I believe, has a game in Snowflake. I believe they're playing Glendale in Snowflake. And I am not sure about the Muggy on Mustangs. Uh, Muggy on Mustangs took it on the chin last week and dropped their winning streak. Uh, I believe they lost to Hayden. I might be two weeks behind on that one, but I think they lost to Hayden. Um, fantastic group, fantastic athletes over there in Muggy on. We have coming out on the field right now. Are we getting a shot of this? Indeed we are. This is a youth football program for Round Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to recognize tonight 
the Round Valley Youth Football League. See some flexing going on. Some wrestling going on. The opportunity to learn and play at the game of football. They travel and play at other venues in Northeast Arizona, including Sholo, Snowblake, and St. John's. They appreciate the long-standing support from the Round Valley Unified School District and this wonderful community. Some tough-looking kids down we'd there. Like to welcome <laughs> and introduce you to the Mighty Mites. The Mighty Mites, that's the youngest group. I'm not sure that age. First and second graders. <laughs> Got admission to the gun show, do we? Mighty Mites and, and the juniors. Have your fifth and sixth graders, coached by Jordan Brick. Put your hands together for the Miners. The Miners. Miners in the fifth and sixth grade. Oh, that's fun. All right, all right. It's not you set in stone, stone, but there's a big they impact that that youth football you. program has on the future players of Brown Valley at the high school level. It's fun to see them. They're excited, they work hard. Some years they have a little bit more success than others, but the parents are dedicated and they help the kids develop a love of the football, and playing football and being on the field. Indeed. And just being exposed to the rules and the flow of the game that early on only helps you as you grow. There's a lot to learn, people that never watch football often wonder, how do you know all the rules? Just Well, some of us don't know all the rules. Mr. Muth does. But just a little bit of time and exposure. What do we have coming up here? I uh, don't know. We have no lights. And I'd love to say it's planned, but I also see a slightly oh. puzzled look on Wes's face. Were they singing the fight song down there? They were. I missed that. I just, well, I couldn't quite hear it all the way up here. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. Yeah. Daniel Heinemann. Uh oh. We need you to close those breakers again. Daniel Heinemann. Pop the breakers. Oh, man. Pop we got too excited. Lost a little light. Oh, there, they go. there we go. Are we lined up to Just do some races again this time. week? I think so. That was a kick a couple weeks ago to watch that. Had some kids from Round Valley win a few races. We had a couple kids from St. John's. Indeed. Win a few races, and the kids had a good time. They have a bunch of kids in the end zone lined up. We are trying to get them organized, right, if that's what we're doing. All right, I need you to listen up. Kiddos, can I get your Trying to hear the rule set All here. All the kiddos down there, listen up. We don't have a lot of time. Here's what we're going to do. This is a good old-fashioned boot race. You need to take off one shoe. One shoe right now only. Take off a shoe first. I need the kindergartners, first and second graders to the goal line. Kindergarten, first and second. Hurry up. Kindergarten, first and second to the goal line. Two shoes are not good enough. You got to take off one for this race. Indeed. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We don't have a lot of minutes. Kindergarten, first and second graders on the goal line. Next, I need third, fourth, and fifth to be ready. Third and fourth and fifth be ready. And next, kindergarten, first and second. Everybody, give your shoe to Miley or Jackson. You got one shoe, give it to them. Kindergarten. First or See, First or we overcomplicated this this uh, week's race because we we got rules now and it's just you got your, it's too much. You're handing somebody a, a a bunch of shoes that can't smell real good. Yes. But they're not high schoolers, so maybe they're not that bad yet. Yeah, well, that's true. I have, uh, it looks like controlled chaos down there. It is serious. Kindergartners first and second to the line. Hurry, kindergartners first and second. We only got five minutes time. to get this done. I think we're running out of time, and Wes is getting nervous. Yep. 
Well, so what, are, what adjustments are you looking at for the second half, you think? For the second half, well, Round Valley's going to continue to get some experience on our younger players. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, Ganado, you know, really, their defense is uh, really what has, has hurt them. They're not getting a lot of uh, pressure on the ball. But, you know, I have seen as they've gone through, I've seen better play from their defensive ends. They're starting to stay home, starting to follow some of the misdirection from the quarterback better, and they're getting a handle on it, so. I think, in fact, if, it, if we do kind of sub out in a systematic way, we're going to find a balance. You know, some of these younger kids playing up against Canado, that they're going to be able to, we're going to get to a place where they can stop as well as offensively. Indeed. And we're going to struggle a little bit defensively, and so it may be a little bit closer in the second half. I'm hoping for that opportunity for some of the youth, but I know that the coaches, they have some specific things they want to work on. Here we go. Oh my goodness, the shoes are flying. Shoe oh, they got to find their go shoe. find your shoe. And they get back. Oh, some just took off. Well, that looks like Lester who just crossed the line, <laughs> putting his shoe on down there. He's got his hands waved that he was number one. Third, fourth, and fifth graders coming up. This is chaos. I love it. So they I throw the so shoes much. everywhere, make the kids go find them, put them on, and get back to the goal line. Once again, Interesting. Let's go up to halftime, giving some prizes to the winner. Winner. All right. Wow. You know, I do look forward to those big plays from Ganado. They have had some success offensively. They've had those big, exciting passing plays. If we make some substitutions and they get a little pressure, a little left pressure off that defensive line from Brown Valley, I think we're going to see a little bit more throwing from Ganado. There may be an opportunity for some, some more big plays as the younger players kind of adjust to the speed on varsity. Uh, it'll be fun to watch. Ganado certainly hasn't quit. They showed that they were continue to fight, run hard, play hard. Here we go. Next race coming up. And armfuls of shoes being thrown in the air. There they go. You know, they're they're making it a learning experience. They're definitely getting uh There we go. A little girl in black followed the rules, I believe. Well, it sounded like Wes just disqualified. Well, half of them just grabbed their shoe and ran back over the line. You're supposed to get your shoe, put it on, and then get across the line. Hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's what or I've maybe heard. Maybe that's not cheating because they're just kind of figuring out the rules. Hey, is there a better way if you're a parent to watch your kids at halftime than to know they're down on the field? Oh, yeah. Just enjoy the chaos and know that they're not getting in trouble. Here goes the next shoe toss. They're in the air and they're throwing them down the field this time. Oh. Wow. Somebody <laughs> waited till they're already down there and then threw a shoe. Oh, man. Whoever this is down here got shortchanged on that exchange. Oh, they lost a shoe. Oh, maybe he's like, hey, that's one. not my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Think we get this done too? in a minute 20? No, is there not if there's adults. Is there high schoolers too? I don't see any down there. Oh, I see some neon fedoras. Oh yes, they are lining up right in the middle. Where did they get that many neon fedoras? Is it is this an Oriental Trading Company order that I It has to be. Every dollar general between here and Shello has been rated. Straight up, okay, so this, yeah, they threw them to the goal line, they threw them away from the goal line, now they're gonna throw them straight up, hopefully. The race wow. is on with the high school. I see quite a few members of the soccer team for the boys out there. Shoe on your foot, shoe on your foot. You gotta put it on first. Oh, the race is on, who's back in there? Oh, those long legs, make it look easy. <laughs> winner, winner, smelly foot dinner. Alright guys, thanks for being part of the Let's Go Bells Halftime. Round Valley's back on the field doing the warm-ups. 
We got the second half coming up momentarily. We're getting ready for fun things. We'll be back in just a second to start the second half. Otto has it teed up and they're ready for the kickoff. The referee's getting everyone square. And we we'll await the whistle. Number three, Tristan Sosi on the kick. Looks like that's picked up out there. A down rocker. That down? That was Dallin on the carry, brings it up to about the 35. We have another player down for Ganado. So it may be a few moments before we get playing. I've heard it helps if you turn your mic back on if you want to speak. Were you over there talking for a while? Oh, I was talking you? to myself. We were, we, were, we were starting to see our propane third quarter. There's all kinds of things going on. Then I realized, hey, I can't hear myself. Well, now you have an opportunity to pick back up on this year propane third quarter. There we go. Yep, such a shame to see uh, another Hornet down right out of the halftime. Unfortunately, he's been a big part of their defense as well tonight. So, uh, so it does look like we have changes right off the bat coming out for Round Valley. It looks like I see Brenton Walker, number 22, at quarterback. Um, Jose Leon, number 19, as a running back out there with him. There's going to be some other names that I'm going to pick up as I get a chance to see the, the numbers. <laughs> Jose making cuts. Ran over number 15, but 15 held on. He was not letting go. Jeremiah Slinky? Slinky, that is Two indeed. names written down there, Slinky. Yeah. So I, I, asked, I asked him how to pronounce it, and they said, like the toy. So Slinky it is. Slinky it is. See Kamari out there. See Jeff Cochran out there. Lane Hill running off on that play, number 15, I believe. Number 44 to the top side, Brandon Pena split out. Walker takes the snap. 
Hold on to it. Brandon Walker, freshman. Number 32 out here to the near side. We haven't listed on the program. Well, that is Kamari. Brent Walker on the keeper picks up about five yards. All right. Well, I believe if uh, the rules haven't changed, we're one score away from running clock. From a running clock. And I don't remember that golden number. Is it 50? 45, I believe. Walker back. Hands the ball off to Jose. Some other names in there. I see Crow Richens, number 58. On the line for Round Valley. Number 54, Brody Finn. Sophomore for Round Valley, getting some playing time. Number one coming in, Kellen Greer. 42 coming off is Jeff Cochran. Looks like Nell is right there in the middle as the center, snapping that ball. And off to Jose right up the middle. We're going to get three yards on the play. 51, I see coming up off the pile for a lineman for Round Valley, Ryan Pena. He's out there with Cody Finch on that left side of the line. I know we used to enjoy him up here helping us run cameras and part of the crew, and then he decided he wanted to play football and kind of spoiled our fun. Once they get a little taste, sometimes you lose them. I Cole, know. Cole Tom, number 88, coming in, getting an opportunity, some playing time. He's going to be split right behind the uh, line, right on the line. Well, he stacked right behind the tackling guard. They're going to hand off to Jose, and he's going to. Looks like he's going to pick up a first down. Well, this uh, younger younger classmen, I guess, lower classmen, they're really uh, doing a good job keeping the ball moving down the field. They are. It looks like four Round or five Valley. yards at a time. We'll get it done. Looks like Round Valley has all their starters out, and a combination of their freshman JV squad is on the field moving it. Walk with the shotgun. Hands off Leon. Leon gets mad at the line that of time looked like down. he picked up a yard and well. The far side marks him in one spot, the near side marks him in another. Well, 840 left to play. Sierra Propane third quarter. The Elks on the road next week headed to show up. Walker back for the snap. They bring uh, number the one motion. in motion. Shakes two tackles. Gets caught by the third. Kellen Greer gets stopped on that. This freshman team has some athletes and they have some speed. Kellen Greer is fast and on that play he just got caught up. That was designed to go out to that outside and he kind of got turned around there, but we're gonna see some good things out of him, out of that young man as he continues to work hard coming up these next few years. Walker's back again. And off of the middle. We're going to gain back some of those yards. I believe it's going to be fourth and 12. Looks like Jose took it right back up to the 31, so it's going to give us about a fourth and 11. Kevin Flores is on. He's going to spot that right about the 38-yard line. Be a 48-yard field goal. Did we get a lean back on that before the snap? They're going to call it. <laughs> I love it. They're pumping him up. So instead of a 48, we're just going to line this thing up.
Looking at a 53-yard line, or 53-yard attempt on the field goal. They got him again, rocking. Going to take us right out of range, I believe. I think he's got the leg for 53. I'm not sure he's got a leg for 58, but they yeah. may ask coach to let us try anyway. Yeah. Oh, then what was the penalty afterwards? Uh oh, is there a little taunting going on over there? Just said it. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm confused. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe someone jumped that time? On their, on their team. So we're gonna try the 46 yarder. I think he hooked that. Wide left. No, dang it. Kevin has done a fantastic job for Round Valley for the last three years playing soccer the previous two years. This year, I do not believe he's playing soccer yet, but he has kicked well for Round Valley and just took that to the left. So on defense, I also expect to see some new faces and numbers out there. We will try to get those to you as we have an opportunity out here on the corner. Number eight, Kenley. Caldwell, he's been in the game, but he hasn't been playing the corner position. See on the far side, 18, Trace Whiting. Riley Harlan's gonna play a deep safety position. Looks like we got Brody Finch out there. Riley Ray, number 75, number 78, Oscar Gutierrez. And I believe number 66, Cody Finch. Cody has been in there especially on offense, but he's going to see some action on the defensive side of the ball. Linebackers, 42, Jeffrey Cochran, 19, Jose Leon. Lane Hill, number 15. I'm looking for that other linebacker. Can't quite see that number yet. That may be number 80, Brian Acosta again. So the Hornets going to run it up, pick up about two, almost three yards right up the middle. Round Valley's going to stay in that four-man front and uh, fake the handoff, and there is pressure all over the place. Lyman breaking through. See 75 crawling up off the bottom of that pile. Almost made it back to the line of scrimmage, but not quite. Go ahead and watch that one again. This is a lot. Uh, yeah. Hornets break formation. They're going to send one wide right, one right, wide left. Actually, two to each side. One running back. Quarterback's going to drop back to throw. That is almost picked off by Brian Acosta. Number 80 gets his kind of off the tip of his fingers. He wasn't quite expecting that when he turned around. Well, another quick four. Sorry, three and out for the Hornets. And... Uh, not what they were hoping for. So it looks like a JV uh, return team in. They're trying to figure out uh, their man, what assignments are supposed to be in. Jose Leon is back. He's going to take the kick right around the 48-yard line, bring it up over the 50 and the 40. Nice return on that down to about the 32-yard line for Jose. Well. Looks like the Elks will get another chance to take over about where they stalled out last drive. We're switching balls out. I was going to say, that didn't quite look like the Round Valley one. That does. There we go. They use the darker leather typically. Indeed. All right, now we're back to the action. Some personnel changes for the Hornets.
Walker back to receive the snap. He's going to hand it off to Jose. Jose's going to come back up, but that defender grabs onto him and holds on, drags him backwards. 26 for the Hornets. He made it back to line of scrimmage, but that was it. Dante Laughlin on the tackle for Ganado. Number 16 coming in and Jose coming out. 16, if we got our numbers right, we've switched him a couple times here. Is Gavin Pettit. He's a freshman for Round Valley. He's going to be in the backfield with Second Walker. Line. Walker give him Pettit. Down. Pettit's going to dive off the right side and get picked up by number 24. <laughs> <laughs> by number 24. Hey, he got a yard. There. Got the whistle, set him back down. It's good to see. Uh, Starting to see a, a size difference between the uh, lower classmen and the upper classmen it's, here. It's a big size difference. Typically, maybe a sophomore year starts to go away. Junior year, you don't see it. But as freshmen, you can often see that size difference. So we've got two split to the left, one out here to the right. Jose Leon back in the backfield with Walker. Walker's going to take the snap and hand the ball off. Leon. Straight ahead, he's going to pick up about four, maybe three. All right, are we going to have another uh, kick attempt? It looks like we are. I like it. Without the penalties. He's trying to set up on the 34-yard line. That'll be a 44-yard field goal attempt. Brett Jordan deep snapping, it looks like. Riker Marble is a hole for the hole. Kevin Flores, did he get that? That looked good. No. I'm not sure. I, it looked like it went through. Was it wide, wide right? right. Well, I'll watch the replay because I don't believe it. And, yep, yeah, snuck right outside that right. Post. Okay. Apparently we're uh, getting 80s with it. Why not? Retro Top Gun coming at us from Wes. Might as well. So Pettit looks like he is now the safety deep for Round Valley. He's Runner picks up about almost five yards. Great second there. effort after the initial contact. Got him that extra right, three so yards there. Christopher Sosi, running back there. linebacker Obviously for Ganado, kept the Lakes driving. Brent Walker in at quarterback tonight. If you were going to give Brent Walker a call sign, what would that call sign be? 928-251-0005. If we were going to put a name on Brent's helmet, what would his call sign be? And off again, he's picked up number 75. Riley Ray on the tackle. Pushes the pile forward for about a yard. So third and, is that three or four? It's about three, you're right. Otto's going to have two in the backfield. Back, back, back to pass. Oh, just overthrew it by three. just a little bit. Nice pass. Guy, is Tanner the guy that caught that long reception in the first he half? He was. Going back to the well, trying to make another connection on that. And here we are in another fourth down situation. Timeout, Ganado Hornets. Trace Whiting out there. Providing the defense out. for Round Valley. Right. With that, there, there's only two minutes left in this CR Propane third quarter. Can you believe it? It's gone by quick. It has. We've committed to running the ball with those younger group that's in there, and it's just chewing the time off. Okay. 
Otto is back out on the ball. Right away. Fourth down and three. It looks like Otto is going to go for it. Brown Valley initially dropped back. Just off the hand, number 88, Wyatt James. Brown Valley will pick up again right there at the 30-yard line. Excuse me, 27-yard line. Walker calling out the, out the call, gets the ball. He's going to keep it on the pitch. Get stood up. Walker with the key they pick up the yard on the play, second down. Number 88 and 24 for Ganado. Sean Moore and 88 Wyatt James in on the tackle. Indeed. Big shout out to the flower box there in Springerville by the subway. Hey, you want uh, the best deal for uh, your boutonnieres or corsages? Mention Let's Go Elks when you order there at the Flower Box in Springerville. They also do unique gifts, not just flowers. All right, 19 taking it up the middle, met hard, but still a solid game of about four yards there. The flower box, do we know when homecoming is? What game that is? That is an interesting question. Either it's Winter Rock or Winslow maybe. So it's still got a few I'm weeks, not sure. but it's coming up. Opportunity to use the flower box. Indeed. Don't forget about Let's Go Elks when you order because who doesn't want a discount? Hill coming across. He's going to lead on the block right there. Ganado's going to make a stop. Yeah, Ganado bringing some heat, stopping that dead. Looks like we're going to try this again. Kevin's going to come out. Set the tee. Twenty-nine yard line, so it'll be a thirty-nine yard field goal. That's the end of the third quarter. And the switch into the field, and we'll be right back into it on the last quarter. You know what this means, don't you? What does that mean? It means we're going into the Molly Butler fourth quarter, which means this game is almost over. Hey, I love Round Valley football as much as the next guy, but I still do have to work in the morning, so I am not hating uh, an early night tonight. We appreciate Ganado making the trip down to play us on a Thursday evening, and hopefully getting some views from parents and families up there in Ganado supporting their team. Indeed, you know, they have played really hard tonight. Not an ounce of quit so far. No, not at all. You can. Uh, See some of the, when we look back at their schedule, that Holbrook game was a tough game, but they uh, put the herd on Hopi and Tuba City, so they got some fight in them. It looks like they're coached not to give up. They work hard. Kevin is setting up on the 29 yard line on this other end of the field as we go into the fourth quarter. We're going to try another field goal and see if we can get this through. Hey, third time's a charm, right? First snap down, and that looked like that was a bad caught. hold. Unfortunately, he got, he got under that one. Well, we'll go back to the replay. You'll see. This is a, fortunately the hold. That snap a little low. Yeah, it looks like he kind of 
Yep, it was low, didn't quite make it to him. And oh well. Hey, that's that's the game you play. That's the game you play. It's a good opportunity to get out there and practice it in a game against an opponent that you're not facing every day in practice. Looks like the Elks continue to make substitution changes and opportunities to give kids a chance to play. I saw number 76 running out there. 76, according to my program, is Wyatt Hetrick, but that is not Wyatt. Ganado spreading it out. Pass picked up by number 88. Gain of about 13, maybe 14 yards. Indeed. Tell that's what they're hoping to do, spreading them out wide. Once again, Mr. Anderson, are you in the house with us? Yes. Yes. I'm not sure about that number. Number 76, I think that's Connor Lackey. With Lackey Reynolds. Quarterback oh, takes a snap, fakes a handoff. He's going to throw it right over the oh, middle. Oh, off the his guy fingertips. Is wide open. Just threw it a little bit in front of him. Yeah, just about a half step ahead. He got his fingertips on it, but not able to reel that one in. Second and 10. Looks like that defense is staying in some sort of a zone formation, and he was free to run across there with plenty of room and just did not make the connection. So they're going to come out with three to the left, one down here to the bottom, one running back for the formation. The quarterback's ready to take the snap. He's going to fake the handoff again, and he's going to throw down this side. Seven comes back and makes the catch on the ball. Indeed. Christian. Christian Hardeny, I believe, on the reception. That ball kind of hung up on the quarterback. He threw it out there, fluttered out there. Receiver had to come back and make the reception. The cornerback was kind of turned around. Wasn't quite sure if that ball was coming over the top. And the receiver made the reception on that. Indeed. Connor coming out. Looks like we got Oscar Seth coming back in. Again, Oscar is our foreign exchange student. They're going to send. They've got questions on their formation. So here comes the flag. Well, I see got 12 guys on the field. 12 on the field. They broke formation of 12 and are marching back five. They still have 12. Substitution in practice. All right, off number two is now off the field. There we go. <laughs> Official timeout. Oh, spotted the ball wrong. Correct in the spot on that. Ganado's right back over to the ball. Number 75 for Ganado. Oh, hit hard ball on the deck. And we got a flag in the backfield. Matran, Tris Francis, number 75 for Ganado, that center. Uh, Cody Finch was back there. Did he get a handful of face mask on that play? I missed it. Uh, it didn't look like it. He, it looked like he had him by the arm, but, you know, if that's... Did he just motion that towards Ganado? Was that a hold? I, I don't know. Let's wait for him to make the official call. They're still discussing it. Let's see if we're still hooked up on the reception here. Foul. Defense, face mask number 66, 15 yards from the previous spot. Result of the penalty will be a first down. There you go. Nada will have a first and down at the 29 yard line. They're going to come up they, with formation. They got the yardage. Three split out to the left, one back here to the right, one running back. <laughs> and he's going to throw. Oh, he can't hold on to it that long. 
Who's getting back there? Number 54, Brody Finch for Round Valley. Pressure by the Oaks defense right there, a loss of about two and a half, three. Mr. Brody Finch is a big young man, sophomore from Round Valley. That's fun to see him get it back in there, get the sack. Yeah, they were having more luck with those quicker reads. Sitting back there and holding on to it doesn't seem to be a winning formula for them. Pitch the ball out to number eight. And that looked like Jeff Cochran coming up to make the tackle. We're going to get a flag. Did we get a face, face mask again? I'm not sure. Jackson Thomas. If I had to guess, off. that's what I would say they saw. There we go on a replay. Possibly a horse collar. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit, number 15. Oh, it was a late hit. Spot of the foul, third down. Third down. Third it's down. Third and three, guys. There we go. Correcting third the old chain gang there. Quarterback back to pass. He's going to throw up the middle. The receiver did not cut on that route like he was expecting. That fall is incomplete. We're going to have a fourth down for Ganado coming up here on the 22. Oh, looking at the replay, had a good option underneath, but went for the uh, end zone strike. Can't blame him. I feel like I've worn out this White Mountain Regional Medical Center uh, replay button tonight. <laughs> Used it well? Yeah. Ganado comes up. It looks like they have double tights. Two running backs they are going to give it right up the middle. They're trying to gain that first down, and they do not get there. Oh, Looks man, like real close. All right, and now we're going to switch directions here. Round Valley defense getting the stop. Just under 10 minutes as we wind down in the fourth quarter. Round Valley 43, Ganado 6. Coaches for Round Valley are making an opportunity for the younger kids to get in, to get some playing time, get some experience, <laughs> get a different team. Oh, it's always fun to get to see the underclassmen play. After getting pounded on all week by the varsity, you know that's a good thing for them. Oh, yeah. Looks like Madrid is back to Reese as quarterback in the fourth quarter. He's going to take it and hand it off to Jose. Jose is going to cut it up the middle. Nice gain of about 11 yards for Jose Leon. Looks like we got another player down. I don't know if he got cramps or just got hit low. Yeah. I've seen a couple Ganado players grabbing calves like they're having problems with cramps. I don't know if it's the uh, elevation, but uh, seem to be struggling on that sideline because I noticed their quarterback did it in the last series. He also had to do it. Nice prolonged calf stretch down there, so. Madrid will bring the Elks up to the line, bark off the call and take the snap. There it is, A. <laughs> I can hear Haas all the way up here. So, Cody, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got called out. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, first down. I'm guessing he got a little excited. Round Valley's just going to run the play that they had, get lined back up, make the call. Madrid's going to hand it to Jose again. He's going to break a tackle, break one, and get picked up by the next. Probably a gain of two yards. Uh, looks like the spot is about, nope, two. He, the initial spot was only a yard, but then they, they moved it up. So. Well, 
And uh, just a reminder, next week we will be in Sholo, but it's going to be an audio-only broadcast. We are not allowed to do video at that venue. So, uh, oh, interesting. We will be there for audio. The Drew took a snap. He'll hand it off to Leon again. Leon again up to about the 30-yard line. Excellent recovery off that low snap. Could have been a bad situation. He's able to scoop it and get it handed off to where it needed to be. Now that's your Madrid, right? That is. I thought so. Is he a sophomore this year? Oh, he my is. goodness. So Round Valley is going to have a third and 11 ball right on the 31 yard line. A little confusion over the formation on who's on what side. It looks like we're going to have two split to each side with one running back. Let's see if they look to throw here. Ganado looks like they're going to bring pressure off that left side. Madrid rolls away from it. Oh, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much. <laughs> They were coming after him on that one. Yeah, he got back there, and he had a lot of unfriendlies in pursuit. <laughs> so that's going to take the ball all the way back to about the 22-yard line. Round Valley's going to have a fourth and long, so we're going to Well, go. unfortunately, I don't think uh, he has the leg for uh, that much of a field goal, but uh, so punt team comes out on the field. Have you seen him punt before? I've seen him punt. He's got to punt it, yes. No, but, oh, but uh, have you seen Flores punt before? He's done the kicking. Oh, that's true. But Normally Rikers, it's uh, Marble yeah, punting so for us. He's so. getting an opportunity here. Let's see how he does on the punt. Number 10 getting a little excited. Oh, and it bounces. This Flores gets it. Gets it off. off. Look at that spiral. Look at that bad boy. Bounces on the 30, and that's going to go down about the 16-yard line. You know, the most impressive thing on that is he got a spiral and it turned over. Yes, when that happens, it just seems like they go a long ways. Indeed. Well, hey, he's got my vote. Great job, Kevin. 62-yard punt. Impressive. Off a short snap, nonetheless. Which the only thing worse than a short snap on a punt is a long snap. Because you got to turn around and chase after it, and then you have no idea what you're turning around into. Well, you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know something's coming. You know what's coming. Round Valley's back out there with their freshman and JV mix. Got Otto's coming back out. Looks like they're going to run a, a bunch formation again. Well, maybe a tight end to the left, two backs. They're going to hand it right off of the, the hunt, man. Number eight, running it hard for Ganado, Jackson Thomas. <laughs> Carrying number 42 for at least three yards of that. Jeffrey Cochran on the back of them trying to slow him down. Looks like we have Brenton Walker out here playing some corner. In this quarter, he played quarterback the last, so they're kind of swapping that around. Kamari is out on that far side playing corner. Gabriel James coming in here in the back. He's playing a safety for Round Valley, number 30. They're going to hand it off to number 18 right up the middle. Excuse me, number 28. They're going to pick up the first down up to about the 32-yard line. Indeed. That'll bring us 545 left in this Molly Butler Lodge fourth quarter. So there's an ongoing debate here on Let's Go Elks. We'd like to get your opinion. Is it... The uh, forest berry pie or the uh, mud pie? What's the better? You you chocolate or fruit pie, man? You know, I'd have to say the mud pie, but I haven't had that. You haven't had it? I haven't. Well, we're going to have to rectify that. Uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a fan of the fruit pie as well. Mostly because I'm not a huge chocolate fan. Just a little bit's nice, but too much is, is it is it too a, much for me. Is it a is it a pure chocolate or is it like a mocha flavor, uh, like a coffee flavor chocolate? Nah, it's more like a, a, a chocolate, like a fudge. But what do I know? I'm I'm the guy who doesn't like chocolate that much. So, Ganado hands off to the left side, number 28. He's going to get it up to about the 40 yard line. It's going to be third and one. Well. 
Number 51 coming in for Round Valley, Ryan Pinion getting an opportunity on the defensive line again. They're going to bring out Cody Finch, who's had an opportunity to play offense most of the evening and some defense right. here in the second half for Round Valley. Ganado calling a timeout. So we'll get some ad rolling. Big shout out to one of our longtime sponsors here, Farmers Insurance, Troy Merrill, your uh, insurance agent here in Round Valley. Uh, life insurance, auto insurance, all of the insurances you can think of, he offers them. Used him personally myself for a lot of things. And Go down to see Troy Merrill right down there next to the shortstop. That's his office right there in that building. Troy and his staff will take care of you. Indeed they will. Troy is a great supporter of Round Valley Sports. He is. Let's go out to the Round Valley Sports. He coaches baseball as well as the head coach. And then Jamie, and I think we have a little interaction with Jamie on some other of this stuff coming up here. Uh, do great things for the youth of Round Valley. Ganado back out, third and one. They're gonna hand, hand the ball off to number eight. And he's gonna get oh, stacked he's gonna up. My goodness. Number 42, Jeffrey Cochran stuck his head down and kept him from getting first down. I mean, I'll be honest with you. You need two yards. Did you see how soft our corners were playing? They were back eight, 10 yards. It's exciting to see this freshman group. They had a very successful eighth grade season. It's kind of been mixed because they mixed with the juniors this year. This group, I think, is going to be pretty good by the time they're juniors and seniors. They're going to be really fun to watch. Cole Tom out there, number 88, kind of swapping places with Lane Hill, linebacker position. There's a jump. Oh, I think it's going to be on 28. If he didn't go, they would have gotten. Oh, uh, we've got encroachment get... and false start. Who's going to win this battle? Defense. Looks like we're going to uh, pick that one up, and Ganado's going to have a first down with the ball at about the 46-yard line. Ganado dodged a bullet there. Because the running back, he was definitely moving, and it, he wasn't drawn off by the defense, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Lackey was ready to go on that play. I'll say that much. Indeed. They got to come out with 12 again. There's 13 on the field. That's worse than 12 last time I checked. Offense, 12 men on the field at the snap. Five yards did, I, did I miscount? I thought I counted 13. You might have. They're going to come out in a formation. Trips left, one wide right, one running back. Shotgun formation, quarterback gets the ball. He wants to throw right down the middle of the field. Oh, man. Just a little miscommunication. Number 88 is out there saying, I'm open. Tanner Guy, give me the ball. Gabriel James is saying that you are not as open as you think you are, but that is a debate for another time. They're going to split two left or two to the top, two to the bottom. One running back again. Quarterback drops back on the shotgun. And he's going to run it. Great open field tackle by number two. Nice. Brandon Walker. Coming Was up that Walker? Stop. Well Walker done. Quarterback's trying to give him some of those fancy shake and bake moves, and he wasn't biting. He wasn't biting at all. The he was hardest, taking that leg and not letting go. The hardest tackle to make is that open field tackle, and he got it. Indeed. Clock's rolling under three minutes. We're at 2.40 here in the fourth quarter. Otto's going to line up with the tight end on this play. They're going to run number 28. Brody Finch. Brody Finch, I apologize. Brody Finch puts an end to that one quick. Gonna have a fourth down in about four yards.
All right, so as we wind down the final two minutes of this game, who would you choose to be the White Mountain Regional Medical Center player of the game? Ganado comes out in a, are they gonna punt this? No, they're not gonna, they are gonna punt this. So we got, Brent Walker back on the, on the punt. He's going to return it. Reverses the field. I was just about to say, he's such a sneaky return Number man. Number 88. He kind of just snuck out there. He kind of dipped down a little bit. Wyatt James on the tackle. And he just watched Walker come out there, waited until he ran out, and put a pop on him. Nice return by Walker on the punt. You know, we had some... Uh, some quick scoring early in the game. I know that Riley Harlan scored uh, several times for Round Valley. Um, let me think about it for a moment. Who do you think so far? Honestly, I think I'd like to give it to Flores for that amazing punt and all the fun we've had watching him kick these field goals tonight. I think he's had a great night and it's been fun watching him. Madrid hands off to Leon right up the middle about three yards and they'll throw him back. I don't disagree. But, I, but that punt was just amazing. To get 60-plus yards after a short snap, you know, with a short wind-up and just a quick kick, to get that tight spiral, get it to roll over, I mean, that, yeah. was, that, was, that was a thing of beauty to me. Kevin Flores, an impressive kicker for Round Valley. Indeed. It's been fun to watch. It has been fun to watch. We're rolling up with a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. Round Valley's going to come up. It uh, looks like they're going to take another, another snap. I'm going to hand the ball off to Leon. Once again, right up the middle, number 28 is going to come in, kind of throw the running back forward. Looks like they're going to give him the first down. I'll be honest, uh, Leon, that number 19 here in the second half has been a, a workhorse. There'd be a case to make him the uh, player of the game as well. He's had a really good showing here. I know we're a week late and a, a game short, but against Post and Butte here in the Dome last week, JV, he had a fantastic game. I think he scored three touchdowns in the first quarter. Looks like the Elks are gonna go into victory formation, take a snap, or just let the clock wind or run out. They're gonna take a snap and nil on the ball. We're in victory formation, nils on the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for joining us this evening here on the Thursday evening. Round Valley beats Ganado 43, Ganado 6 in the Round Valley Dome. Yeah, really appreciate this Ganado team making the trip, not having any quit in them, and a good, a good showing for them. In you a know? couple months, Ganado's going to have an opportunity and they're going to pay us back. Typically, it involves basketball. Yes, indeed. Both teams going, meeting on the 50-yard line and shaking hands. It's good to see sportsmanship. It was a pretty clean game all night. There's a few personal fouls as far as face masks, but it didn't seem like it ever got chippy. Both teams Indeed. kept uh, kept it clean. Indeed. Well, with that, we're going to bring it on in to our Lackey Reynolds post-game show. Hey, if you need to rent a uh, skid steer loader or a little mini excavator, go give our friends down. Oh, that's fun. So, what would you say would be the Winslow McNeil White Mountain Chiropractic adjustment of the game? You know, because I didn't have a chance to watch the game last week, and I, we talked about that a little bit earlier. 
it looked like there were some specific things that the coaches were wanting to run. Specific plays, specific players, things that they were trying to execute, and they had the opportunity tonight to do that. So they made that adjustment. I know that they're looking ahead to next week, and we'll talk about that briefly. But it looks like they focused specifically on some some things that they wanted to work on tonight just to get an opportunity, different, different team, different faces. So a little farther down in the press box, uh, Coach Mosses and I were talking that – why, why didn't they get one more touchdown? Why didn't first string go in? Why didn't we knock the 42 points so the clock would run? And really, I think what you're talking about, Scott, is exactly why that happened. Because we, we didn't want to force the 42 points to start the running clock because look at how much play time, look at how much experience those freshmen got. We were announcing numbers and names that we haven't all season, and it was awesome to see those guys get some experience. Brenton Walker, Jeffrey Cochran, Brody Finch, just a number of names that got some really good play time. And so I think that was a neat adjustment, not a typical adjustment that you would see in a football game, but look at the experience that the Elks were able to have in the second half and be able to grow, right? If we had something happen later in the season, those kids have that experience to step up and play the position a little bit more. You know, it's hard to tell because a lot of people don't get out and come watch the freshman games or the JV games, but this is a fantastic freshman group. They're followed up by a fantastic eighth grade group. Yes. But this is the opportunity that they get to play because here in a couple years, maybe two, you're going to start to see all those names out on the field, making plays, having a big impact. Again, Echo and Mostas and I saying the exact same thing. When this team, our upperclassmen, followed by the eighth grader class that's happening right now, I think that's going to be a really fun Elks team to watch play. It's There's just some, some really fun talent that are going to be connected together at the varsity level then. I love it. Yeah, so that was a fun adjustment to watch tonight. You know, our season's been rough. We've had tough. We've had rivalry. We've had, you know, a big school kind of back to back to back. But getting the kids out on the field on the game like tonight, all the kids getting some good playing time, that was a good adjustment. So I stole Ethan's headset. I'm going to give it back to him. I'm going to try to get on the field and try to grab a couple Elks after they get out of the locker room. We'll see if we can't catch an interview or two while you guys do more of the Lackey Reynolds post-game show here on Let's Go Elks, baby. All right, thank you, Wes. I'm allowed to talk again. I was in timeout. So Wes gave me the stat book this evening. And I had no idea how to use it, so we don't have any stats for you. All well, I know, all yeah. I know is that we ran for. I'll be honest; it would have been a nightmare with how many different <laughs> names were touching the ball, even on a good night. So, a little shorthanded. Sorry, we didn't compile a lot of stats tonight. Um, so, what's the word on next week as far as the video broadcast and the audio and all that? So, uh, Sholo, uh, interestingly enough, has started. Uh, He's, uh, they've started uh, leasing out the uh, live streaming, the video rights. And so someone has paid for those rights. And so we are cleared f uh, with the AD to do an audio only stream. So we're going to go, we're going to set up, we're going to do audio only, and we'll still be there to cover the game. We just won't, will not be allowed to do video. So is that a school by school Ooh. decision? Yep. It's uh, the uh, ADs have that power and authority, apparently. Um, AIA reserves the right in the postseason. They have their own system for that. And uh, otherwise, yeah, it's school by school, whatever they want to do. And that's what uh, Sholo's chosen to do this year. So, so I know that we're going to kind of um, – Wes is going to go down and try to get some uh, – talk to maybe some coaches and some of the players for us. So there's just a moment of opportunity here. Some other things that go on around the mountain. We're on a Thursday evening, so we don't have any other scores really to throw out at you to give you updates. There are some things going out on the mountain that people might be interested in. Not necessarily Round Valley fans, although I am. Tomorrow night down in St. John's, they are um, kind of celebrating, setting aside or dedicating the Mike Morgan the field, football field stadium after Mike Morgan. Oh, wow, that'll be fun. So it's going to be the Morgan Stadium, huh? The Mike Morgan Stadium. I was – former Coach Brian Bell caught me this evening, asked me if I was going down, and I and I hadn't planned to, but I just might. Coach Morgan was a stalwart down there for 30 years. As Wes is down on the field asking if we're ready to take him. So that is going on down in St. John's. Yes. We've talked a little bit earlier, Sholo will be playing Winslow. That's a regional rival. That'll be over in Sholo tomorrow evening. 
Snowflake will be playing Glendale. And then Blue Ridge actually has a Saturday game, I believe, up in Window Rock. Those are some of the other things going on this weekend. It's kind of a stretched out weekend. I think it ties back to the AIA and the referee issues. Um, some of the struggles that the AIA has had trying to get referees to continue to ref, sometimes it's a hostile environment. And sometimes they choose, you know what, it's not worth it. And I understand that. Um, and that's kind of the battle we're facing. And the effect that we're seeing is we're playing on a Thursday night, which is okay. All right. Hello. Can you hear us? Mic check, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Yes. I just need to turn you down a little bit. I think it's that. All right, guys. So we are, we are down on the field just waiting. Uh, the team's in the locker room right now getting their – their debrief taken care of. We're going to try to grab us a couple players here. So hope you guys are enjoying the Lackey Reynolds postgame show. I don't know if it was like neon disco night or something down here, but we had like flashing sunglasses. We had bright pink everything tonight. So good stuff going on. Good, good, um, good vibe going, I think is what the kids say now, right? Good vibe here in the Dome this evening as we celebrate a bright and colorful win against the Ganado Hornets, 43-7. to here in the Dome. Um, Elk's on the road next week. Have you guys talked about the Sholo game next week, Ethan? Indeed we have, and uh, we're just commenting that we're going to be there anyways. It won't be a, vid a video stream, but we will be there doing audio, and we're looking forward to it. Ought to be an exciting game. Yep. It always is. We're going to give you the best broadcast we can within the parameters that we've been given, Elk's fans. Be part of the herd with us next week as we give you an audio broadcast with pictures, as many pictures as we can get uploaded, as much as we can show you. We're going to give you everything that we can. So join us as we go on the road to Sholo to bring you the audio broadcast. We were away with them last year as well. It's interesting to see how that shook down two back-to-back -back years with Sholo in Sholo. Oh, well, hey, do you want to talk for a second, Stephen? You got a minute? All right, so I got Stephen Pena here, who's the man on the field. Give me just a sec here. He going to go with him for a second. He's got the final stats for the games. Mr. Pena, what do you got for us? I mean, like, way more kids getting way more stats tonight. That is great. Tackles were all over the place, I'm sure. I'm not sure if I can get to them right now. I can. Yeah, we, we dominated 357 total yards, 103 yards passing, 254 rushing, 22 first downs. No, they had 238 yards, most of it in the second half against the young guys, other than that long pass. Um, let's see. Hey, Jose Leon ended up 15 carries for 70 yards. 4.6. All you need is four for consistent first downs, and he getting it done as a freshman. Yeah, and then you have Brian, Brian Acosta Perez, the 48 yards, 16 yard average. You know, he had some had some great runs. I think that's not quite accurate there. Now that I know, it. that's like a marble numbers right there. Yeah, but he, but he had some great runs. I just know he had a few more carries than three. You know, defense, Keanu Clark, big game, two sacks, three tackles, Riley Harlan. Let's see here. We've got Brody with the big night. Jonathan Madrid had some tackles. Cody Finch, Brody Finch had a sack. Well, we missing Jonathan up. Madrid on the offensive side oh. of the ball too tonight. Yeah, we had Jonathan Madrid around the ball. We had Brenton Walker uh, getting some yards running tonight. It was great. You know, I watch those guys on JV every week, my son playing. It was great to see those young guys out there and get some good numbers out and so, have a good experience. So. so standout players for you this week, then, for your perspective on the field, who are some of the standout names that you want to give some shout-outs to this week in the game? Oh, you know, got to throw Keanu out there. Second game at linebacker, got a couple of sacks, a couple of big plays early, turned the momentum, I thought. Uh, Ziegler, big game, yeah, yeah. Uh, having to run, play running back tonight, had some big runs, had some great tackles. Trace and Merrill. Huge intimidator the first couple of series, batting balls down, yeah, yeah. you know, getting, making sacks, getting hit, you know, just strong play all the way around. You know, the, the starters were dominant. You know, it's great. Good warm-up, you know, getting rested, healthy for next week. Had some guys that uh, didn't play tonight because yeah. of injuries that, that could have been, probably played if it was a big game. You know, they wanted to make sure they're healthy next week. So was there some strategy involved? We, we were talking about the 42-point rule, running the clock, what second half going to look like earlier. And, and this was off stream, This and maybe they were talking about it too during the halftime show, but uh, was there some strategy in changing things up early in the third quarter to allow those underclassmen some playtime in the, in the second half? I don't know. 
honestly, I, I'm not part of that conversation. But I had the same thought in the, in the second quarter. They were thinking, nah, because there was one play where our receiver caught the ball and me, I think, could have scored and he took break. But we scored on the next play anyways. Sure, sure. But, but I think that some of that consideration is there. Hey, let's keep it under 42 so that we can play a full half in the second half as much as we can. Well, in a more structured and full half, not yeah. eight minutes, 12 minutes, and it's gone. You know, really quick stuff. But we were able to see a lot of freshman names that we hadn't been oh, announcing. Yeah. We were looking, and Leon was fun to watch oh, tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Britton Walker. I mean, they – just he, he reminds me a little bit about Riker, his freshman year, just how small he was his freshman year. But, again, drops his head, makes a run, right? He had that punt return oh, for, like, 30 yards. One, one juke away from going 70, 80, 85 yards for a touchdown. Yep. Now, me as a dad, I'll, I'll throw my kid out there. It's fun watching my little 140-pound guard block a 340-pound line, lineman. You know, yeah, there's definitely some strategy there and how <laughs> how you're going to do that, right? You know, and push him off line. But watching all the, you know, uh, Brody Finch had a great game, you know, on defense. I think he got a sack, but these young guys did a good job. Hey, well, all right, well, when the boys come out, we're going to see if we can grab a few of them as they come. Hey, Britton, you mind if we catch you for a second? I'm going to try to catch them as they come out, guys. Sorry if you're still on me on camera right now. We're going to try to catch a couple – of our our second half stars that got some play time. This is great. So, Will, will you keep watching? See if you see Jeffrey. See if you see some of the other freshmen. But, ladies and gentlemen, joined by number 22. Joined with me right now, number 22. Brenton, how you doing tonight? Good, how are you? Good. So, fantastic to get to see a change up. We, I thought we'd see Brett Jordan again in the, you know, in the second half get to play. We did see that. And then second half, seeing you in. Tell us what was going through your mind as you took the varsity field tonight. Oh, uh, I was a little scared. But it just got more comfortable as it went on. Well, and we saw that. That punt return for 30 yards is fantastic. How'd that feel for you? So good. What, what, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Until after. Until you got hit. <laughs> Felt a little less good at that point. I get it. I get it. So, what was there a play for you that really stood out? What was the funnest part for you this evening? Probably the punt return. Awesome. The punt return. Fantastic. Anybody, anybody that you want to give some love and some shout out to tonight that really helped you make it happen that you really felt was, you know, vital in the second half? Dallin Walker. Dallin, how come? He just helped me get through it. Fantastic. Are you looking forward to Sholo next week? Yeah. Are you Now you're playing both JV and varsity, so are you excited to get to be there for both games? Yeah, it'll be fun. Fantastic. Sholo, we played on the road last year, again, headed on the road. This year, again, we're going to be just a crazy game. Um, anybody that you want to give some love to that might be watching on the live stream this evening that watched you play in the second half? There? I don't think anything. I think there's a lot more people than you realize that we're watching tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Brenton Walker, this is not going to be the last time that we interview this gentleman right here. Freshman for the Round Valley Elks. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on the win. I'm going to send it back up top because the boys are getting changed. I don't know where the rest of them are. I'm going to send it back up top to Ethan and Scott to wrap things up in the Lackey Reynolds postgame show here on Let's Go Elks. You guys got it. All right. Thanks, Wes. That was fun to see and fun to watch. Indeed. Brenton as he stands down there. Before we finish this off, I'm just going to throw a little. Uh... You got you got some some scores, some schedule. Yeah. Thoughts? What, what I'm looking at is, you know, I know that we broadcast football typically. Sometimes we'll do basketball and maybe a soccer game. But there's some other things going on that the the community supports. Let's go Elk supports. So it just doesn't always get broadcast. It looks like the volleyball team has a tournament coming up this weekend in Snowflake. The Snowflake Be Like Nat Invitational. Um, if you'd like to get out and support the volleyball team doing that, that would be fantastic. The boys soccer team looks like they are participating in the Sholo Soccer Invitational this weekend over in Sholo. That would be fantastic. The girls play tonight in St. John's. I don't know an update or a score on that. It doesn't look like they have any other games this weekend, but they will be back on the road next week, it looks like, in Snowflake. So there's lots of kids, lots of programs, lots of families involved. As you have opportunities to support them, we encourage you to do so. All right, thank you for that. As I've been thinking about it, you know what I would think uh, for the uh, – Winslow McNeil chiropractic adjustment of the game. I think coming out with that defensive front and being hyper aggressive really set the tone and shut them down early and really just kind of contain this game from the beginning. 
and I think that was that was good to see. We've had a, a lot of emphasis on uh, staying home and and uh, reading a lot because a lot more teams are running that option. But it seems like tonight we were just hyper aggressive on that D line, and it really, really set up the pace of the game early, and you know turned it into the game that eventually. I turned into I don't know I ran out of adjectives I apologize no I believe the defense helped set the stage for the game early on Round Valley kind of set the tone early was able to score early and often um, but the defense kind of started that out for us, so I agree with you there wrong button I know what I'm doing sometimes there we go <laughs> overlays I know what they mean I know what they do well, guys, I think that's going to about do it for us tonight. Uh, really great to see these uh, young guns get a lot of good playing time. Um, another big thanks to all of our many wonderful sponsors. Uh, for those of us who joined us, um, you know, go ahead and give us a, a like, subscribe. You know, those things help. We've been steadily growing each and every week. We couldn't do it without you guys. And... We appreciate all the help that you guys give us all the time, and the support has been amazing this season as it is every season. Uh, big shout-out to our crew tonight. Again, on our main camera, we had uh, Loey. She does a great job for us. She continues to keep learning, and uh, I thought she did an excellent job tonight. We had Sherrod Martin down there on the sidelines doing his thing. Got us some great shots tonight. I'll, I'm looking forward to asking him how he enjoyed that. And a big thanks to you, Scott, for coming up here and helping me keep things on, on the rails while I, you know, hunted, hunted gremlins and fixed problems that, unfortunately, I, I feel like I might have created in the first place. <laughs> well, it was good to be here. It was a fun evening. Um, I had the opportunity to go and watch Snowflake and Sholo last weekend, so I am really excited about next week. I will say that Sholo is a tough team. They're well coached. They are fast. So I know that the Round Valley Elks have a – a good week's worth of work ahead of them and, and to be able to come out and play next week and compete well, uh, they have a challenge. Indeed, next week is a huge game, a tough game, and I look forward to seeing it. So please join us next week. Uh, thank you again. And, uh, hey, you guys have a great week. Stay safe. Make good choices. And with that, I'm Ethan Holiday, Scott Madrid, and that's been Lexco Elks. You guys have an awesome evening. And uh, thanks for joining us.